guys, Alan from Hat Gadgets here. Today is review day. Over here we have a box from Circuit Specialists and it's a Hantec power supply. It's the PPS 2320A. This power supply has uh, two variable power supplies in it and one fixed one. Uh, the fixed power supply is 2.5 volts, 3.3 volts or 5 volts. Uh, that's at 0 to 3 amps. And the two variable channels, uh, what we get is 0 to 32 volts, uh, and those are both 0 to 3 amps. Of course, this one can be put into uh, series mode or into parallel mode, uh, just like most of these uh, variable power supplies. Uh, the nice thing about this one is it also has USB output to be connected to a computer. Um, so you can actually do some logging or some remote control uh, of your power supply through the computer. Um, Let's crack open the box and see what we get. Okay, haven't even taken a look at the item inside yet, but I'm quite impressed by the shipping container here. I was expecting just to see the item inside this box here. Um, let's see, it's not a... Okay, so this outside box isn't actually a Hantec box, or at least it's not marked. But it is a true box inside a box. Okay, and this one here on the inside is actually marked Hantec. So I'm not sure how they got a, a precise fit like that. Maybe they actually create boxes for all of the different items, but here's the actual Hantec box. Um, and yes, the item number is what we saw before. So what we got inside here is a operations guide. So that's perfect. We have a power cord. We have a uh, very small, I'm sure this is just the software, very small, on a very, one of those very small disks. Um, has some of these leads. And it's a screw terminal type, which is, uh, which is interesting. We have a USB cable. And the actual power supply. Let me grab this power supply out and uh, let's check it out. Okay, so the power supply was nicely in the box with uh, with these these foam inserts. So it was held quite nicely, and it was just inside a nice protective plastic bag to keep the unit uh, dust free and um, free from scratches and scuffs and stuff. So from the outside, we have a carry handle. It's a plastic carry handle with a couple uh, items here. Looks like it'll be easy to get into. There's a couple screws here. On the back we have your plug. Looks like there's a fuse in here, USB connection and a fan. Now hopefully the fan on, on a lot of units, the fan will only run when it needs to, um, just to keep noise down to a minimum. Hopefully that's the case on this unit, we'll see. And this is actually a rubberized, uh, well, it looks like it's a a rubberized surround here. It's actually not sitting on that, so that's quite nice that it's just uh, it's there for additional protection. And there's a couple feet in the back, so the back feet are not adjustable, they're fixed. And it looks like they're plastic, not rubber. Um, looks like, yeah, so the back is not rubber, but the front must be because the front is actually sitting in place quite nicely. And yes, there is rubber under the front here. And these are actually positionable. So if you put it in the higher position, uh, it, is, it is plastic in that case. When you, when you have it sitting down, it's not going anywhere. It is on, on some nice rubber feet. Okay, so here's the front display. We have a uh, voltage, it says push coarse or fine and it's detented it feels actually very nice obviously clickable and this one here says current push for coarse and fine that also feels quite nice um, okay we have a bunch of buttons here And here's all our connections for power, our ground connection, 
power. Okay, so what do we have? We have the first one is channel 2. That's kind of odd. They wouldn't have on the left-hand side channel 1. Anyway, I guess it doesn't really matter. So left-hand side they have channel 2. Right-hand side we have channel 1. So channel 1 is listed as the master. And underneath that we have some information. This is the serial output would be negative and positive for serial. And if you're doing the parallel output, uh, they abbreviate it P-A-R-A -A output. Um, this would be negative and this would be positive. And then this is our third channel down here. This one is 2.5, 3.3, uh, 5 volts at 3 amps it says. So here's our ground terminal for that and negative and positive. And so down here let's continue we have channel 3 underneath it underneath that it says beep I'm not sure what that means. Um, it says key unlock and key lock long push. So I'm assuming you can probably lock it by a single push and then unlock it by pressing this for a long time. We'll see how that works. Here's a bunch of memories. Uh, it says recall and save. So you have four memories. Um, and save is underscored, just like key lock is underscored. So I'm assuming this is the legend for that underscore. So I'm thinking that um, you press it once to recall the settings. You press it a long time to save the settings. Okay, and this underscored beep this thing probably beeps a lot when you're changing things maybe and probably a long press on channel 3 will take off that beeping. Interesting. Okay, so we have channel 1 and channel 2 select. Okay, so channel 2 is pointing over here, so this is channel 2. Again, interesting that left is channel 2, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Channel 1 is pointing in this direction, so over here this is the channel 1 displays. Uh, constant current, constant voltage indication amps on the left, volts on the right, uh, para, which is parallel, tracking, serial, so tracking you'd be able to, I'm assuming, have um, the master be adjusted, so let's say you have it set for one volt at one amp, channel two, I'm assuming, would also be set for one volt at one amp, uh, outputs, 2.5, 3.3, 5 volts, so I'm assuming there's going to be LEDs behind here, so as we set channel 3 to uh, whatever we desire, those will indicate. And then we also have for our four memory uh, positions, and we have the four, I'm assuming, LEDs behind these M1, M2, M3, M4 to indicate which one we're using. That'll actually be quite nice because if you're working on a few different projects, you could uh, very easily switch between them just by saving all your your settings and just uh, just press a button to get uh, get between them instead of having to fiddle with the dials uh, and especially here since we have um, it looks like we have these two dials are um, for whichever one you're you're adjusting so for example if you're adjusting channel 2 you, you could adjust it here then you would actually have to switch over to channel 1 to adjust that one um, as opposed to some units that are actually, you know, they would have independent control, so you could sort of tweak this one and tweak that one. So it's nice that there's some memories here to uh, to quickly uh, get between them. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, SER, INDEP, so I'm assuming that's serial independence. I haven't uh, looked at the manual yet, so um, so far I think it's quite self explanatory. Uh, PARA, which I'm assuming is their parallel or independence button. Uh, and this is track or independent. And output. I'm assuming this output is just whether the output is on or off. And obviously this is just power on. This might actually be uh, disconnecting the transformer power, the mains in. Um, it feels quite large and clunky, which is a good sign usually. So let's uh, put some power on this thing and see what we get. Okay, so let's check this thing out. I was a bit worried. I've played with this thing for uh, probably all of uh, two or three minutes. And when I powered it on, this is what I got. 
crazy loud fan. However, the good news is it turns off after about 20 seconds. Right about now I was like, oh my god, it's staying on forever. But uh, wait for it a little bit longer. And there we go. So that's 20, 30 seconds it stays on and eventually turns off, which is fantastic. Um, okay, let's take a look at what we got here. Um, I played around a little bit with it just to see if it worked the way I thought it was. I, I haven't uh, taken a look at the manual yet, so um, that's good news. This thing is all pretty much self-explanatory. Um, the only one thing I was uh, a bit surprised at the way it worked was the memory location. So I'll, I'll show you that in a second. Um, and there's also there's quite a bit of good news with these uh, voltage and current uh, selectors. Uh, so for example, let's uh, see here where select it onto channel 1 so the voltage and current uh, dials here will adjust my uh, output for, for uh, channel 1 which is right here let me just turn the meter on and pop it in here now one thing you'll notice here uh, compared to a lot of other meters is you actually have four digits of uh, voltage four digits of current so um, my previous meter or, or sorry power supply only had meters that had three digits for current and voltage so this is a, a nice upgrade um, let's see here so right now we're set at two volts now we're not showing anything yet because we've actually have uh, it off so here's the output here there's an LED beside here that tells you when it's turned on one of the interesting things is uh, even though it's off um, you can see here the 3.3 volts uh, that is that is actually on so the output only turns off channel 1 and channel 2. It doesn't turn off the channel 3. And we can take a look here. I'll just go through the different settings. So there's 5 volts. Um, actual voltage is 5.05, which is fantastic. Here's 2.5 volts, and it's uh, 13 millivolts out, which is fine. And here's 3.3 uh, volts. This is not loaded, so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll put a bit of a load on there later and see what that does. Let's just go through the operation for now. Okay, so I'm hooked up into channel 1. This is set for channel 1 again. And uh, we'll turn the output on. So we're set at 2.07 volts. And there we go. So we're off by a little bit. But uh, boy, that's, that's nice and close. Okay, so as we turn this dial, so we're actually changing uh, 10 millivolts each indent so there's uh, there's little detents here so each time you adjust it it's adjusting by uh, one least significant digit on this display which is nice now the one thing that threw me off a little bit and this is actually a good feature um, so let's say if I turn it slowly about half a revolution okay so half a half a revolution of the dial is about 13 counts on here and I'll rotate it back slowly again. So there we go. Now I'll rotate it quickly. So obviously here I got uh, a huge increase. So these are actually velocity sensitive, which is, uh, uh, it, it sort of made me wonder. I was just, at first I was just checking to see if, if this, uh, if the, it was catching each detent when I was turning it. And it just sort of surprised me that it would, uh, it would jump so fast I was thinking there was something wrong but it's actually a feature that as you spin it quickly um, you can actually increase the voltage nice and fast which is fantastic if you're just looking to uh, you know move up a volt or two or or so instead of going uh, uh, 10 millivolts at a, at a at a shot here um, now the other thing that was actually quite nice is let's say if you want uh, 5 volts you know you could you could crank in 5 volts but if you're sitting at zero, you push this button here and you know you can easily get five volts here and you can see on the scale it's actually quite uh, quite reasonably five volts. Um, and I thought that was it, you know, it, it defaults back to adjusting the least digit or you press it and you can do volts. Well, it, it actually gets better than that. You can press this again and choose the digit you want to go to. So let's say I want to crank it up to, you know, um, something higher there's my 32 volts um, works quite well that way now the other nice thing and you've probably noticed that already um, so let's say if I'm if I have this set to 1 volt 
and I go ahead and I want to crank this all the way up to the top, even though I'm looking at this digit here, it will actually realize that I've, I've gone to the max of this, but if I crank it again, it'll just increase the next digit to whatever we can get, because it can't obviously go to four, so it, it'll do what it can, which is increasing this. So, so that, that's awesome. And same thing going down, let's say we're cranking it down, you know, I go to zero here, and if I turn it one more time, it'll bring me right down to zero. So, so that's nice if you're just trying to get somewhere quickly, and uh, um, you know, and it, it's a nice feature. So here we're actually, the output is on, so let me put something on here, uh, okay, there's 10 volts, and my current shows zero, so this is actually telling me what the current draw is. Let me just uh, quickly tag a, a little power resistor on here, just so you can see something happen. Okay, so there's 100 milliamps. Let me increase this a little bit more here. There's, a, there's 247 milliamps. Okay, so before it was actually current limiting, so here we're in constant voltage mode, uh, 10 volts. And so right now it's showing you a live display of the current. When you press it, now you're adjusting what the current is. And, and this is exactly the same thing. It's, uh, it's velocity sensitive, so as you turn slowly or turn it quickly, it will, uh, it will increase nice and, nice and quick. And same thing, we can adjust up to the, now it says three amps in the, uh, uh, in the information, but it actually does go up to 3.1 amps, uh, which is fine. So let's say we want to keep things nice and safe. So maybe we'll keep things uh, under, well, under an amp, let's say. Okay, so that's the coarse and fine. Now, we've always just been adjusting here channel one. Let's see, we want to do channel two. It's as easy as pressing that button. And now we're doing exactly the same thing on the second display. Let me switch over here. So we got 2.5 volts. And this one also works quite well. And the way these memory functions work isn't exactly uh, the way I thought. I, I thought you would adjust channel one and channel two the way you like it, and possibly even channel three, and then press you know memory one, and it would sort of bring everything back. Um, the way it works is channel one and channel two. They both have memory locations available in channel in uh, memory location one, two, three, four except you bring them back independently. So for example, right now we're on channel two and I can see the current. So I'm set for, let's say 210 milliamps and 5.8 volts. And if I press and hold number one, so now that's stored in there. So now let's say if I adjust this to something different, I'll let that go back, I'll press number one and it brings that back. I can take a look at the current. The current is back there. Um, if I go to this channel, so I've now switched it over to channel one, um, I can see what it was. So it was set for 32 and, okay, full scale, three amps. Um, so I can adjust this down to something different and I'll press and hold this. And now, so I'll switch back over here. I'll change this to something different. I'll press this one to bring this back. I'll switch back over to channel one and I will adjust this a bit differently. I'll press this one and it it brings that back to the way it was. So it's independent. It doesn't change both of them at the same time. However, they are both uh, saving something in, in memory one. You just have to choose the channel that you want to uh, bring back. And the beeping here, when you're pressing buttons, uh, just like uh, we thought at the beginning, this uh, if you press channel three for a long push, it'll give you a beep to indicate that it accepted it. And now it just it, it doesn't do any beeping when you're pushing these uh, these buttons now. Um, you press and hold it again, and now it beeps every time you do it. And you hear that clicking noise. Uh, let me switch it back over to here. What that clicking noise is indicating is um, this will have uh, a large transformer in it with multiple taps and 
just for power dissipation purposes, um, depending on what voltage you're trying to output, it will switch to a different tap on that internal transformer. And so we can sort of see that if we uh, take a look at the voltage here. We'll crank it right down. We'll make sure our output is on. Um, let me see here. Okay, output's on. Let me switch over here so we can see what we're doing here also as well as on the display. And I've taken a look already. So it's basically, it has one tap that does around 0 to 8, one that does 9 to 15, uh, one that does 16 to 23, and one that does approximately 24 to 32. And we can just go through on the volt scale here just to see where uh, those different uh, areas are. So I'm just going to go on to the uh, volt digit here. And you should hear a click when we reach about uh, 8 to 9 volts. There's the first click. So that's switching ranges. Here's the next one. Right there. Next one's there. And this range does all the way to the top of the house. Okay, so let's take a look at a few of these different uh, modes here. Uh, the first one we'll take a look at is the tracking mode. Okay, so when you press the button, the tracking light turns on. And what this mode does is it basically allows you to adjust the voltage on both channel 1 and channel 2 at the same time. So you can see here, they're both the same. Um, however, what you're allowed to do is you can adjust the current limiting for one of them at a certain value and change the current limiting on the other for a different value. Uh, so let's give that a try. Okay, so I'm adjusting the voltage here. I'll make it 2.5 volts, let's say. Okay. Um, oops, and the meters are showing zero because the output is off. And you can tell there's no light here and the constant current, constant voltage, those are both out also. So obviously one of these uh, should always be enabled. Okay, so we're showing constant voltage in both of those. We have our voltages on the meters now. Um, this one here is showing um, channel 1 and channel 2 is on this meter here. Okay, so let's adjust the current on channel 1 to be something different. So we're pointing here, channel 1. So if I give this a press, I'm adjusting this. So I'll change it to something really low, uh, 5 milliamps. Okay, and I'll press channel 1, channel 2 to get over to channel 2. So now if I press the current, and I'll change this some to something, okay, 10 milliamps, there we go. Okay, so these are both sh still showing constant voltage. And our voltages are still the same because there is no load on here yet. I just have this uh, little load resistor, uh, 40 ohms. So this will absolutely pull it, put us into current limiting. I'll do channel 2 first. Okay, so we are pulling our 10 milliamps. The CC light is turned on, so we're now we're in constant current. And our voltage has dropped down to 0.33 volts. And we can see here that we're uh, we're actually really close to that. Okay, we'll try that on channel one. Okay, there we go. We're in constant current. Our voltages on here and on the meter look good. And there's our five milliamps. So that's working nicely. And these will okay and. So right now I'm not able to adjust the voltage and that's because I'm pointing over at uh, this channel. So I just have to go over to channel 1 and then I'm able to adjust my voltage. And you can see they both scale the same. So there's 9 volts. I've got 9 volts on both of these. So that's pretty handy. And basically to get you out of that mode you just press track again and it puts you back in the independent mode. Um, and whenever you're changing modes, it turns the output off. So you can see our output is all off here. And when the output is off, what it does is it shows you what the currents are set for. And it keeps those from the previous setting. Okay, so we are in, in parallel mode. We have it set for uh, just a little bit over 2 volts. I'll turn the output on. There's our two volts here, 2.06, 2 
and if we press the button here we can see we're set to 50 milliamps so quite a small current I just have these two wires connected to the output of uh, channel 1 and if I short these leads out this should current limit to our 50 milliamps so there we go we're now in constant current and we have uh, nothing on this display we're just getting a few millivolts there just a couple which is obviously the voltage drop of this uh, probably two and a half feet or so of very late gauge wire okay no heating obviously here because we're, we're not drawing any any juice at all through this thing okay so now let me disconnect this let me turn the voltage up and here is one thing that I noticed so let's see we'll leave it at uh, let's say 15 volts I'm not sure if we'll see the effect at 15 volts let me short this out okay we don't see the effect at 15 volts there's our 50 milliamp current limiting looks good let me take it top of the house there's 32 volts and we have our 32 volts indicating here okay so that that sort of surprises me um, and it current limits properly after the initial rush of current so we're sitting at 50 milliamps current limited right now and there is you probably can't see it on the camera but there is an actually uh, a welded spot on there okay so we're at 32 volts again we'll do it again so obviously it is current limiting but one of two things either the current limiting circuit takes a little while to kick in um, which I'm not sure if that's really true because on most meters or sorry on most uh, power supplies um, the way that you actually do a, uh, a, a test of the of, of what the current limiting is set at on most of the manual ones anyway you short the outputs and then you, you turn it to what it is um, so shorting the output is is quite common um, so by doing this I don't think I'm, I'm doing something wrong um, we'll see I, I haven't read the manual yet so maybe there is a you know something against shorting it but I don't think so because um, you know shorting an output by accident or you know a, a circuit doing it um, just with a flaw in the circuit when you're designing something will happen in electronics so I don't think this is an issue um, and we can crank this up a little bit more here and what we can do is let's say if we let's try to pull two amps at 32 volts through here so no spark that time it's getting better the other the other possibility is maybe there's a uh, a large output cap I was thinking on here and that output cap is after the current limiting that's a possibility okay so we're pulling two amps through here not a problem at all and our voltage drop across our leads here is 150 uh, milli, 150 millivolts or so okay so there's our fan kicked in obviously we're dissipating some power heating up that heat sink a bit so that's the first time we've heard the, the fan go on okay so seems to deliver two amps no problem now I'm not metering the current I guess I could let me pause this and meter some current here okay so now we're metering voltage and this one is metering current so here's our connection we have to make to uh, um, to draw some juice small spark there and here we go so this one's showing 2.059 uh, this one actually has more resolution than this meter now so this one's showing uh, 2.05 so that looks pretty good let's take our short away what we're actually set at here that, that is what we, what we were set at so that's good and uh, well, shortly after we take the short off our power supply cooling turns off okay so let's take it uh, top of the house I'm not going to do it too long because uh, this one has 10 amps max but um, you can't really keep uh, a high current on these these meters for that long so let's do it for maybe 10 seconds or so okay so 32 volts max current let's see what we get okay so we drop down to one point about one volt and we're drawing 6.2 amps and 
the meter and the power supply seem to agree. The connection was getting a little bit warm there. It wasn't making a great connection probably. And there we go, the power supply fan turned on again. So that looks like it's working nicely. Okay, so next we're going to check out the, the series section. This is the series indication here. Uh, this is negative and positive on the outsides for the series measurement. Um, let me turn the output on. Okay, so we are at 64 volts, which is the addition of these two. So there's our 64 volts there. Let's see how this works. I haven't tried this out yet. Okay, interesting. So what it allows you to do is basically set whatever voltage you want on this side and adjust whatever voltage you want on this side. And it, uh, it just sums them up. So here's our 32 plus 10, there's our 42 volts. So I wonder if it's just bridging a connection between these two points here. Um, I'm curious to see what current does. Okay, so I'm adjusting let me bring it down to a nice whole number here to see what it's doing. Okay, so there's 30 and 10, there's 40 volts. Okay, what's our current showing over here? So we're pretty high. Let me set that to 100 milliamps. Okay, and what's this one set at? This one's set really high also. Let me set this one to 200 milliamps. Okay, let's put a short on the output and let's see what happens. Well, a current limited short with this. Okay, so we drop down. This one dropped to zero and we're in current limiting. This one dropped to nine volts and we're showing current limiting. Um, and our meter is not exactly, but pretty close to this one and hmm, I'm gonna see I'm gonna put a current me measurement on here and see what we're actually measuring okay so once again this meter here on the far side is measuring current I just have it in line with this uh, with this power resistor so let's see what it actually is current limiting at. Okay, so it's current limiting at 200 milliamps, which is the right meter. And the left meter, even though it was set for 100 milliamps, it seems to almost uh, just not care about that. Let's see if we change that to something different. Um, okay, so if we set that for, I don't know, something like 600 milliamps, Oh, and now it current limits at 600 milliamps. Okay, so it looks like um, these are actually just acting as independent power supplies that have been linked together. So by pushing the uh, serial button, it looks like it, it might just physically add a link in here. Uh, between those two. So if I change this one, let's say, to something low, like um, 150 milliamps, and I will change this one to something higher, uh, 200 milliamps, and now if I put a current limited short on here, okay, so both of these are now current limiting. And it's showing me the voltage here as the output. So it's basically this plus this. It's out a little bit. I'm not sure if that is, uh, uh, that might be a, uh, well, I'm not sure where that drop is coming from. And what was the current on there? The current is showing 200 milliamps. So it's whatever the highest one is. So let's see if I change this one to 220 milliamps what do I get here yeah so now it's current limiting it to 220 milliamps 
and now this one is getting a voltage 9.7 volts the actual output is 9 volts though I'm not sure where that discrepancy is coming from um, because I am metering directly across the output uh, so so that isn't having any anything to, to anything to do with this current limiting resistor here so let's see if I if I adjust these so that they're identical let's say ten and a half volts and ten and a half volts what does that change okay so nine point six eight here and we are about six hundred about seven hundred millivolts off I'm not sure why that changes okay let me see here if I change the current is 200 there let's make this one 200 also let's see if that changes anything okay so now I'm showing okay 8.7 okay so we're still off and we are drawing 200 milliamps okay We'll have to do some more thinking on that. I think it just might be out a little bit in this mode. Let's see if it's out if we increase it more. Eight point eight, and I got eight point one seven on the display. I think it just might be out a little bit for some reason. Might be something to do with the the way it puts the link in or something. Okay, so we've seen how this thing works. Uh, next, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the software and see what sort of uh, functionality the software gives us. Uh, we'll also hook it up to a, a scope to see what the, uh, the scope is showing us when we're loading this thing down. Let's see what the output looks like. We're also going to crack it open, see, see what sort of guts are in here and see how uh, the build quality is, etc. So thanks again to Circuit Specialists for sending this thing in for review and uh, look forward to those future videos on HackedGadgets.com. We'll see you next time.